All right, welcome back everyone to Vulcan Deck Masters, week three, day two with me, Frodan. We're just done casting Strive Core versus Kang. Kang taking it in a, uh, I mean, a powerful finish with that swipe. That was uh, pretty crazy, honestly. Yeah, um, very gutsy. Let's just go ahead and say it. Yeah. Out there. It wasn't exactly the, the cleanest technical play, but it had room for the most entertainment factor. So Kang uh, unknowingly was playing for the you know, the fans and the viewer's experience. Yeah. In that case, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about other people who play for the fan and viewer experience. I think it's these two guys. Kibler is already known as a fun deck builder and a little bit creative. I don't expect him to be too out of the book today, but Nairia has been the one who's really delivering the fun decks. I mean, he really has nothing to lose today. He's already qualified 3-0 through the next stage. And today I expect him to bring more cool stuff, whether it's Death Lords and Hunters or really wonky techs and oil rogues or even just, I mean, yesterday we were seeing some really weird stuff too. Um, I'm really excited to see what he's coming out here today for him. Yeah, he didn't bring a, a Hunter, but last time he did, he prepared with Toida, which, and he brought, as I said before, you know, Jungle Panther in his Hunter deck with Stranglethorn Tiger. So it was really cool to watch him bring, because I really liked the stat line of the Stranglethorn Tiger, and he recognized it with Toida, apparently they talked about it, uh, as probably one of the better, most unexpected cards for Hunter, like a card you don't expect to see come down on turn 5, but then when it does... You actually don't have a way to deal with it. Like you, you could blade flurry it off, um, but you can't execute. You can't sap. You can't. There's a lot of plays you can't make on the Stranglethorn Tiger that you would love to. So bringing that really gave him the element of surprise. And as far as Kibler goes, I mean Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler from Brian Kibler Gaming. I mean everybody knows his love for dragons. Unfortunately for him though, they haven't been able to shine at all outside of like Warlock, and he didn't bring one today. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, you can't always be too predictable. Um, and this is a really important match, especially for Kibler, because he needs to win now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's time for him to win and get a spot potentially into the playoffs. Well but uh, it hasn't gone according to plan. Yesterday's loss definitely was painful. Yeah, and he's looking pretty good on that image there. You know, taking... Uh, oh, wow, that zombie chow is taking a spot just right next to Dr. Boom. What was that about? All right, so yeah. just uh, like deck wise, mm -hmm. Kibler brought Paladin and Shaman. Uh, again, one of the few players who even brings Shaman at all. Naria with the Warlock Paladin. So both players are going to be playing their Pally deck, which could lead to interesting mirror match if we get there at all. Yeah, I think so too. Um, Kibler most likely is playing Mech Shaman. I think Kibler is the one that's going to be trying hard. I think. If anything, Nairia would be the one that's having a little bit more relaxed and casual and fun. However, that said, I think despite that difference in attitude in Nairia, where like there's a Lore Walker Cho and um, oh, there's yeah. Oil Rogue versus I saw that. <laughs> yeah, the Patient Warrior, and it was right. hilarious. And I had no idea what was going on in that game. But um, Nairia actually went back, watched everything, and then broke down what he did right and wrong very quickly. And I think that's just like an incredible ability to analyze the game. I think um, he's just really underrated in terms of how he views the game. People really overlook him when they think about some of the strongest analytical minds in Hearthstone. Yeah, I think uh, analysis in Hearthstone is what makes, you know, the big, is the biggest difference between your average player and the, some of the top ones out there is their willingness to sit down and just break down like a play-by-play, -play. you know, all the possible openings of a specific deck and see where it could maybe be refined so that your opponent opening maybe can be a bit more explosive. And that's sure. one of the smaller things that people, I think, uh, don't do enough when they're asking for advice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people don't do this enough. Roll four on their implosions. Uh, if they, they started doing that, <laughs> they'd, be the, they'd be really good at the game. Let yeah, I mean, easy life, right? That's all you've got to do. It'd, it'd you want to play Warlock. really good. Yeah. Someone was like... Putting a post, are Hearthstone is Hearthstone getting more competitive and people are getting better at the game? Like, yeah, man, people are rolling four on their implosions. You know, it's like people are making sure that the boom bots hit for eight every time. Oh no, Kibler rolled one to the face with the knife juggler. That's too bad. But if you think about it, it's going to prevent a life tap one turn earlier, right? Assuming it works out according to plan, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, it's like for now. It, it, it looks wasted. Let, let's see if that one damage ends up, you know, mattering a lot. Yeah. All right. For now, he's just gonna have to part ways with one of his beloved Silver Halo Yeah, that's fine. 
I don't think they've got arms anyway yet. They've they're armless. Been, they've been training all their life, and they're even golden. Put this apple on your head. They're showering the. Yeah, bath. but it's just for show. That's all it is. You know, you know what it is, right? It's, it's just the bling. There's really no yeah. substance behind that. Like, so they spent a lot of money on that armor. Oh, oh man, Kibler getting out RNG here by a little. Ju wow. Okay, thank you, juggler. Um, that was beautiful. In a, in a disgusting manner, it was beautiful, right? I mean, it depends on your point of view. Um, in this case, I think Kibler's okay with using a quality. Uh, he can push through the taunt with the weapon, kill off whatever minion he wants, um, and then pe I guess he want to kill off the knife juggler and then peacekeeper the Nerubian. Make it in turn into the most harmless, innocuous 1-1. Well, what would you? Yeah, the thing, the, the one one is really what sells it. Like the the combination of Aldor and Equality really helps you neutralize the mid game boards. Mm. What I'm curious about is though is like how is it that we haven't seen many more people play the Kodo back in Paladin of recent memory? Well, I think Kodo's gotten a lot worse with the impact of death rattles, mad scientists, haunted creepers. Um, anything else that has around that same range it just feels like it just feels like it's not as good as it used to be yeah. but hunter in really arena, let me tell you, Kodo is amazing it's probably one of the best rares in the game i kind of wish Kodo would come back though it's a really cool card especially yeah, I mean, considering that there were so many combos with humility and elder peacekeeper yeah. Well, it's one of those things, like, I know that right now it might not seem like the best, but the few players that I've seen play it um, have had a really good experience with it. Like, it deals with Flame Wakers, mm -hmm. the Hunter Snow Mission Venters against Patron, Armor Smith, Acolytes of Pain. Like, Hunter is the only class that really punishes it, because they're still the only ones that play a very consistent amount of Death Rattles that you just can't deal with. Sure. I mean, the question becomes, what do you take out of the deck? Are you taking out the Quartermasters, which give you even better tempo sometimes than the Kodo? Um, you know, what are you really trying to capitalize on killing with the Kodo nowadays? It's, Kodo is great single target removal, but Paladin already excels at single target removal, generally speaking, because it has, uh, you know, the Peacekeeper deals with it just fine. Like, if you Peacekeeper something, how much do you really do to kill it? Um, you have true silver champion as well. There's a lot of questions to ask of like, what would yeah. you replace the Kodo for? Is it because Kodo could be good? But would you rather have something better? This is it could be a question asked as well. Uh, so Kibler with the turn seven boom. Now the question is whether or not you try to use that five five for pure value, where you, where you take out the wolf and then you try to get something else on the back end. Or I mean, if you do that, I guess you're going to play Belcher and Hero Power instead of Doctor Boom. Or would you just slam boom and do even yeah, more? Yeah, you, you uh, can pressure? definitely slam boom. You have 17 health, and the most he can do oh. with two cards. <sighs> wow! Oh, Kibler. Okay, well, he can't, uh, he can't play that Doom Guard, but Kibler's gonna be like, uh huh, yeah, of course. You can. <laughs> it's like that Doom Blade top deck after you've gone three of them in the MTG. It's just the most excruciating thing. Although he does pick up a muster for battle, so that's not too bad to go with a Sludge Belcher. It's actually as good as it's going to get for him. Yes, uh, considering that the muster for battle will allow him to pick off the trades rather effectively. Right. He you can play muster for battle, hit the the big game right. hunter, and then optimize the damage. Of course, it's scary that Sludge Belcher would be your only protection. So if your opponent had Owl, then you have to be really careful and you trade in. Okay, so it ends up trading being really safe. Yeah. It's fine because there's no, really no rush. Kiba really wants to take no damage at all. So uh, he could have also hit the 2-1 and go for the double Boombot trades. Um, and I realize that's probably a little bit better play than the one I initially suggested. Alright, well, Nyria is going to get stopped by this Sludge Belcher. It's actually uh, really double. pesky for him right now. Like he's, oh man, the Void Colors are a bit late. There's, like, how many targets left? Maybe one Malganus, perhaps? Like a Flame Imp? Or another Void? Uh, yeah, Void Walker or something. Whoa! What consecration! That is awesome. Yeah, uh, Kibler's gonna be able to shut this down and keep that slime alive, which is really important. 
Yeah, despite the horrendous RNG, Kibler's getting out of this pretty comfortably so far. Well, I mean, that was a great draw off the top. So as much as... And, and, you know, Kibler also had to have, like, the right curve to get everything to. It's just, you know, the, the flashy RNG hasn't been on his side with the knife jugglers and the implosions. But he's also still gotten relatively good positions because of his draws and the outcomes of things. And that said and done, uh, Nyria is not out of it just yet. But even if he draws Morganus, Kibler's waiting. Never mind. It was not yeah, it doesn't seem to want. Yeah, I was going to say, like, a tempo BGH here is actually setting up for a much earlier lethal. Then again, Malganus would be a big deal if it came out. Like, Kibler would be pretty much out of options, but he doesn't want to run into, you know, having to deal with a taunted up minion without a way to kill it, um, is my guess. Because those little 1-1s one -ones are really easy to remove. It doesn't take much for uh, an area to come back on the board. Unless he gets Quartermaster, then they become more problematic. Not in this case, though. All right. Well, then the good news is that nothing will be pulled out of the Void Walker. And you can start pushing for lethal again next turn because you do have these things that whack for a little bit of damage. Yep. Warlock losing another tap and a half. If Malgianus comes out, though, that that is the thing. That is the that is the card that you do not want to see. Well, it's impossible at this point, and there's not going to be any way for Neria to stop the, uh, the lethal here. And Kibler is going to take it. So again, you know, he's tryharding really as much as he can to get that 2-2. Uh, you know, he's currently 1-2, uh, so if he gets a 2-2, he can at least battle off with the tiebreaker. So he needs to win the match. He's not that far away. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in the end, it's it's like no matter what that Warlock was going to draw, I still feel like Paladin's in a really good spot. Yeah. Um, the Malganus is like still problematic, but it needs to go through the one, two taunt. So like Paladin can still, you know, deal with it and whatnot. Um, so I think in the end, Pibler was in a really, really good position to win like 80% plus. There's like almost nothing, maybe even higher. But then now we go to the question, can you win the overall series? Yesterday, Kibler won his first game, and uh, he was looking all right, and then he just lost the next two games. He needs to really pick it up and make sure he can finish out the series strong. Yeah, and like, with the deck that he's got left, which is his Shaman deck, that could be difficult depending on how things pan out. I mean, Shaman is not exceptionally weak depending on how it uh, it's built um, against the lineup from Nerea. Yeah, but I mean, Paladin's not a great matchup. Warlock, you're, again, it depends. Um, that Even that Zoo Demon Lock... I don't think Shaman is like hugely disfavored against, especially Mech. Uh, I think Mech can pull it off a little mm -hmm. more easily, perhaps, than mid-range. All right, so we'll go ahead and see um, you know, what that Shaman deck can do. Specifically, what is Nyria's Paladin deck? Is it more the aggressive Paladin? Um, I think I'd Mech Shaman... Yeah. If Mech Shaman gets his board wiped once by Paladin, like... If Muster for Battle and Shield and Mini Bot controls the state of the board too effectively, then Mech Shaman will have to reach really deep into their deck for the big threats and hope that Paladin doesn't have removal. But there's like one card from Paladin that's like really good against Mech Shaman uh, in a specific scenario, and that's um, Peacekeeper onto the Fell Reaver. And it's happened to me a few times where I'm like, wow, well, I just lose because there's like, <laughs> I just lose the rest of my deck no matter what. Yeah. Spell Reaver doesn't truly matter, uh, assuming you have cards in the deck by the end of the game. But very often, if your Peacekeeper get, lands onto a Fell Reaver, you can deck them out the rest of the game, and then they just run out of threats. Yeah, and then it's just a matter of waiting it out at that point. And what's, what I think I like most about um, Mech Shaman's potential with Fell Reaver is that it's one of those cards that's very volatile. Like, it's one of those cards that they made, and they know it's a high-risk, high-reward from a design perspective, and there's not enough of those that are played. Like, I really wish we saw more of them. And, like, Mech Shaman is one of the few decks that even bothers including those cards. Yeah, that's true. Um, so here we go into game number two. Uh, Mech Shaman, starting off with Cogmaster is important. We don't have Kibler's hand just yet. Looks like we're going to have to bounce right back in. I think we're just trying to re-invite him. Getting the early curve is so important because this deck from the Warlock player is really good at commanding an early board presence. And if the Mech Warper stays alive, which looks like it will... Oh man! He's gonna be able to curve out really aggressively. So, do you, do you curve out with Fell Reaver, or do you yeah, curve out uh, with uh, Pilot that Shredder? That was my question. Okay. And I think you don't have to. You can play Pilot Shredder, and you can stay on curve. 
And um, you can save the coin for something else. Would you, though, save the coin for something else? Well, now that he got rid of his uh, Haunted Creeper, maybe I don't, I don't think so anymore. Because now you can play the Fel, um, the Fel Reaver first and then play the oh, Pilot know. Shredder on, on curve. curve. Yeah, the next turn. It's kind of like a reverse curve. You're yeah. Like putting the 5 drop ahead of the 4 drop, but you're still curving well. Yeah, what I'm scared of is the defender of Argus plays to really make yeah. the Fell Reaver ineffective. Oh man, but, uh, you know, we could actually see the entire deck being milled if we see that. Like, there's a definite possibility that. Yeah. Zappel this Maddie? Voidwalker. Oh, he's gonna play the Haunted Creeper. Okay. I was expecting the Void, but. So. I Kibler basically has to close, it, shut his eyes, and not look because that that's got to hurt. That would hurt me. So eight damage. I mean, with the fen of Argus and Voidwalker on turn five, without Lightning Storm, this is. Um. There's no way. To, there's no good way to play around Defender of Argus. The only question is if you trade into, um, Juggler. What's it called? Juggler. But he already has Lava Burst and Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. Ragnaros is not the greatest on the board like that, but at least it's like some damage. So if Felriver can hit the face one more time, just one more time. Like, goodness gracious, it's just gonna might end up straight up <laughs> like the end game. Like in the mill war. There's a mill war going on here. Yeah, he's really trying to run him out of threats. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many cards are left in Kibler's deck, but. He's it, lost 12 so far, right? Yeah, and he's drawn like seven or eight, so he's still got like three or four more. Uh, three or four more cards he has to play before he mills them out. Ooh. That's annoying. Yeah, you've got to remove that because Flame Tongue Totem, right, would make it almost. Well, then again, if you remove it, this play is also slightly risky in case his opponent picks up uh, Power Mace. Oh, he discards it. So two Power Mace is gone and one Lava Burst. But Killer heals for two. Here is gonna Life Tap. I guess Earth Shock is like the worst thing that you could see. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Earthshock. <laughs> this is insane. And then you play the Shredder, right? And then you just yeah, lob a burst for the win. Well, if almost. You can. Win. Yeah. You're not gonna quite be there yet, though. Like, how? Like, you have to pick up a Crackle, right? Crackle would do it. Uh, and he definitely plays Crackles. I mean, there's no reason not to. And he's definitely defender of Argusing. Okay. So what's gonna happen is. Um, uh, he's gonna be running oh. out of cards this turn, right? One crackle gone. Rock fighter gone. Okay. Yeah. He's got one Nerea more crackle. Needs is to my guess. Punch in and then defender of Argus here. Mm. Yeah. He's really trying to milk as many juggles as possible. How crazy would it be at, after all these trading doomsayers comes out and just like, oh, <laughs> I wasted all the damage. All your work was useless. He then rock biter is gone. Mech warper and flame tongue. There is still a crackle. As far as I've kept track, there is still a crackle. So Kibler's got that one out. I think. <gasps> oh my! Oh my god! god. Crap, this is a, a spell. 75, oh, man. Okay, 75 percent, 75, oh, and he no. scores. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he gets it. it done with the last <laughs> crackle. The, this is why Fell Reaver truly doesn't matter unless you hit the bottom of the deck and you have nothing else. Yeah. But let me tell you, that was exciting to watch because you just see all those cards being burned and you're, and you're spot on, man. You're calling the Earth Shock, you're calling the Crackle. So that was good play and a good cast, Noxious. I didn't this even do it. This is insane. Just kind of sat there and went, whoa! Well, all right. Well, I'm still uh, recovering from that game. That actually really... Like, that... that I didn't expect Mech Shaman to take it that way. Like, usually Fell Reaver ends up running itself into, like, 25 taunts by the time it does something to a Demon Lock, let's say. Um, that was kind of cool. Wow. All right, yeah. so Kibler's going to take the match. Yeah, and he improves it 2-2, two and two, giving him a shot for the playoffs. I think we have to figure out tiebreakers after the group's over. But Nyria's 3-1, still guaranteed to move on. 
and uh, he, you know, he's not too miffed by the result there. Right. Um, that wraps up our third match. We have Life Coach versus Ivan coming up here. We haven't seen Life Coach in a while. He's one and one and needs to win in his next couple of matches in order to guarantee himself to go through. Ivan, unfortunately, is eliminated, but he can take out Life Coach, earn back some pride, and you know, get get his name out there as like a guy that beat Life Coach in the past in case we see him in the future. Yeah, we've actually, uh, we saw Ivan play a few times. Again, he seems to transition. He, he's transitioned with a few MTG habits that are kind of uh, obvious if you if you look at his play. So uh, eventually he'll get a lot more comfortable and his results will probably shine, um, you know, like they should as a experienced card player. So we'll take a short break, guys. We'll be right back with Life Coach versus Ivan. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 